Hey y'all, in this lesson, we're gonna be talking about ratios and rates, even unit rates. A ratio compares two numbers or two quantities that are measured with the same unit. The ratio of A to B is written A to B or A colon B or as a fraction, A over B. When a ratio is written as a fraction, we want to simplify it or reduce it completely if possible. And when a ratio is improper, that means bigger on top, we don't convert it to a mixed number. We leave it improper because it's a comparison. We're comparing two different quantities, two different values. So let's practice a little bit. Let's write e each ratio as a fraction, 15 to 37. So 15, the first number goes in the numerator, 37, the second number goes in the denominator. Uh, we were not given units here, so, and it does not reduce, so we would just leave it. So we've rewritten it. Next one, 45 to 20, 45 goes first, 20 goes on the bottom. We leave it improper. However, we do reduce. They reduce by five to get nine over four. And you leave it, no converting, which is kind of nice, I think. Ratios that involve decimals require a little bit more work before we can simplify. You wanna multiply by multiples of 10 to get rid of the decimal. Then you rewrite it as a fraction and then reduce. And when it says multiply by multiples of 10, that depends on how many values are in the decimal position and you go with the larger one. In the first example, however, in each quantity, we have one decimal place. So I could multiply both numbers by 10 and that would quickly get rid of the decimal. It would convert this decimal number to um, a whole number. And once they're in whole numbers, then you can write them as a fraction and reduce. So this moves the decimal one place. This moves the decimal one place. Now we write it as a fraction and reduce. These both divide by 16 and we get three over seven. I wanna show you a little trick, whoops, in your calculator to make this process a little bit easier. Since we've already dealt a lot with fractions and reducing fractions, um, that's, not so much the objective of this lesson, but it is the kind of foundations, the behind the scenes. So this process is important to know, and I'm not minimizing that, but also to kind of speed up the process as you're doing mathematics, I wanna show you how to effectively use your calculator because that's just as valuable. My goal in the calculator is to reduce 48 over 112. So I'm gonna write that as a fraction in my calculator, 48 divided by 112. I put it in parentheses to show my calculator that this is a fraction. And then I'm gonna to go to math. The first option says arrow fraction, that means to a fraction. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna reduce it for me. Isn't that nice? It's a lot faster. Next one. In the first number, we have one decimal place. In the second number, we have two decimal places. So we're gonna go with the higher number. We're gonna go with the higher amount of decimal places. That means I'm gonna multiply, instead of by 10, I'm gonna multiply by 100, which will effectively clear my decimal. So now I've got 270 to 54 as a fraction, we do 270 on top, 
And then I can type it in my calculator. Whoops, that is not right. There we go. Math, fraction, enter, five. Well, that's nice. So this obviously reduced on both. We get five over one or just five. Uh, I would do the second one, the one I boxed because we're writing it as a ratio. And as a ratio, you're gonna wanna see that um, first number and second number so that we read it five to one. That's a little bit more proper, I would say. So that's not too bad. Ratios involving mixed numbers. So now we, we've done ratios with just whole numbers. We've done mixed numbers. And remember that we don't really want them written as mixed numbers. We want those two nice, neat values, one on the top, one on the bottom, so that we can compare them more effectively. We're going to, because of this, we're going to convert the mixed numbers to an improper fraction, divide, and reduce if necessary. So we have a ratio one and three fourths to two and three eighths. These are mixed numbers, mixed fractions. We need to convert them to improper fractions so that we can compare them as ratios. And remember to do that, we do this little roundabout thing where we multiply and we add four times one is four plus three is seven. Same thing on the second one. Eight times two is 16, plus three is 19. Now we're comparing two fractions, which we can write as a ratio. So like a fraction of fractions, seven fourths over, I'm gonna do a bigger line there so that I can like see it, 19 eighths. And then remember when we divide fractions, we flip the second and multiply. I'm actually gonna reduce first to make my multiplication a little bit smaller. And then I don't have to reduce on my last step. So one and three fourths to two and three eighths converts to 14 over 19. And that's the ratio we're looking for because a ratio has just those two nice, neat numbers that we're comparing. And that's gonna bring us down to rates. A rate compares two quantities of different units. A rate is usually, usually written as a fraction, like the ratios we've already seen. When writing a fraction as a rate, we put the first given amount with its units in the numerator. and the second given quantity with its units in the denominator. So in these previous examples, we were not given the units, but if you are given the units, you need to write them. You need to be very specific, especially in mathematics. Uh, when rates are simplified, the units remain in the numerator and the denominator. We, you have to keep writing them. You need to be very specific, very detailed. Jan drove her car 530, miles in 11 hours. Write this rate as a fraction. It's done. At this point, you do want to see if your fraction reduces. Um, I knew that this one didn't, so that's why I said it was done. But if you want to just double check that, you can check it in your calculator. Make sure it doesn't reduce. This one does not reduce. So that's all at once. Very simple. Now, typically we like to express rates uh, per one unit. So you'll recognize rates in real life as like miles per gallon, miles per hour, feet per second. And you'll notice that that second unit is uh, it singular, is per one. And that helps us compare rates on the same unit with the same denominator and it helps us compare these values a little bit more more easily this is called a unit rate 
And something that I'm sure everyone will recognize if you've ever had a job is how much you make an hour. So Danielle was paid $480 last week for working 32 hours. What is Danielle's hourly pay rate? So this is something that we can all understand, which means just think about it logically and re uh, relate it to the rates we've been learning. $480 over 32 hours, spread out over 32 hours, means that we're just going to divide that 480 over 32 hours is $15 per hour. And you might see this written as uh, $15 per one hour, but we say it dollars per hour. Then miles per gallon is something that we're also familiar with. If you've ever gone car shopping, sometimes you like to compare miles per gallon on different types of cars. Evan drives his car 420 miles using 14 gallons of gas. How many miles per gallon does his car get? So we take miles per gallon, and we're wanting to write this with one in the denominator. So we're just going to divide 420 miles per spread out over 14 gallons. We get a nice clean 30 miles per gallon or 30 miles per one gallon or 30 miles per gallon. Any of those are okay. Unit price gives the price per one unit item. Uh, you might, yeah, it's item, but you might, I'll talk about it later. We'll do this one. I'm getting excited. <laughs> the grocery store charges $4.99 for a case of 24 bottles of water. What is the unit price? So when it asks for unit price, it's asking how much is each unit in this collection? So we've got basically $5, $4.99 spread out over 24 bottles of water. That means that we can take this total price, divide it by the 24 bottles, and that's gonna help us figure out how much each bottle of water is. So we're just going to literally divide those, divided by 24, and we get about, uh, I'm gonna go two decimal places because we're talking about money. And if you look at the third decimal, the third decimal is a seven. Since it's higher than five, we round up. So we get about 21 cents per bottle. So each bottle of water is about 21 cents. And this is gonna be really helpful uh, if you're comparing prices and maybe you wanna compare this case with a different case with 30 bottles of water. And since they don't have the same bottles of water, how can you compare the prices with 124 and 130? It's like apples and oranges, how do you compare those? And so to do that, you wanna find that unit price and you wanna figure out uh, how much each bottle is and how you can get the best bang for your buck. Uh, comparing price per item can help you figure that out. So I do this a lot. I have this example down here. I do this a lot with dog food because they have these different pounds of dog food. They've got 25 pounds, 50 pounds, you know, all these pounds of dog food, 32 pounds, and they all cost different, amount, different amounts. And I want to figure out what, what expensive way I can get out of this. How can I get the most kibble, the most dog food, for the least amount of money. And so you can compare per ounce or per pound, or, you know, like in the previous example I gave per water bottle, 
Peter's shopping for dog food at the grocery store. The dog food is priced $11.99 for 32 ounces of kibble. This kibble is way cheaper than what I buy. <laughs> My dogs require expensive food. Uh, anyway, and the same brand of canned food is priced at $3.99 for 12 ounces. Which is the better buy? Now, focus here, we are comparing ounces. So if those two units are not the same, then you need to convert them to be the same. Uh, there's nice converters on Google if you just type uh, convert ounces to pounds or pounds to ounces or gallons to ounces or whatever, it, it does it for you. So you can do that real quick. But if you're gonna be comparing unit prices, then they need to be in the same units. So in one case for the kibble, the dry food, we have 11.99 for 32 ounces. And for the canned food, we have 3.99 for 12 ounces. And then we can, since those values, none of those values are the same. They are in dollars and ounces, but it's a little hard to compare. So we convert it to a unit rate by dividing 11.99 for 32 ounces is about 37 cents per ounce. And then 3.99 for 12 ounces is about 33 cents per ounce. Now that they're in the same unit, we can compare the prices and you're gonna get more bang for your buck with the canned food. It is less expensive per ounce. That is all I have for this lesson. If you have any questions, I hope you enjoyed it. I said that wrong. If you have any questions, let me know. <laughs> I'd be happy to help. I'll see you in the next one.